Okay. All right. Hallelujah. We are going through, this is going to be lesson four on Andrew Womack's study, uh, The Believer's Authority. And it's what you didn't learn in church. And so uh, we have a class here, uh, been together a lot of us a long time. We have some new members we're glad to have on the class. And we're recording this lesson as a benefit uh, for the class to go back and, and watch and that kind of thing. And if you're enjoying this lesson, uh, hallelujah. I mean, because uh, the Lord has given his word. It's an equal opportunity word. The Lord has made things simple. I mean, it's it's really the 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 more that I uh, get to know Him, the simpler things are. You know, He didn't complicate anything, but man in religion, you know, tends to do that. And so we're glad that you listened to this lesson. We hope you glean a lot. Uh, we just uh, look for everybody here to glean a lot. I glean a lot. You know, as we go through it, praise the Lord because He's He's ministering. And uh, so what we'd like to do is, uh, like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat lessons one through three. We're going to go through lesson four, and then we'll do some discussion along the way uh, in context of what we're studying. And uh, that's where we're at. So I would like to see who would like to open us in prayer this week. Dean? Da -da 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 -da. Who would like to sing a song? Hey, okay. Lord, we just thank you for letting us all be here together and that you love us so much that you want us mm. to um, be able to, to just fellowship and learn more about how we can be victorious in your word and everything that Jesus has died to give us is ours. And we just thank you that you, um, you just open up so much for us to have that we can receive so we give you glory and praise lord and we thank you for jeff that takes time to bring us all this truth and we are just grateful and we ask amen. this in jesus name that you be with us and help us to glean as much as we can amen hallelujah amen. thank you gino <laughs> thank, thank you. you gino praise the lord praise the lord oh uh, man uh what a rich study uh, I would just like to ask, you know, coming out, uh, you know, chapter one, uh, or if you'd like to, a, a general gleaning, what have you gleaned from this study so far? Jump out there, be bold, you know, spirit of the Lord's upon you and, and just share, uh, a little review of one through three, or you can do chapter one or you can do chapter two or you can do chapter three. But uh, just share, because it's in sharing, it's in speaking from your own mouth uh, that it becomes more power manifested to you. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Right, because you hear it. You hear it. I mean, when I'm done preaching, sometimes I'm like, wow, I, I really feel how. That's awesome. So uh, go, go ahead, because the Lord's ministering. Let's hear it. Great smile, Amy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we're in a spiritual battle, that's for sure. <clears throat> and our enemy is Satan <clears throat> and all the principalities and powers and every evil. But mm. we have a power within us, God, the Holy yes, Spirit, we mm. that we overcome. And the devil's going to be under our feet someday. And I loved mm. how when you mentioned we went through this lesson, the focus on the love of God. And when we know how much our Father and our Lord Jesus loves us, um, you, you, we're victors. We're gonna. We already oh, yeah. won. But um, and and the battle, it's it's. I uh, listened to a message from somebody from Joyce Meyer. Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. the battle is in the mind. She wrote a book on that, and the battleground is the mind, and that's where we have to take captive thoughts, mm. and and. Uh, you know, don't let your your thoughts <clears throat> are not. Maybe I'm getting into another chapter. Sorry. Go ahead. You, no, you're you, over. Your thoughts growth go through your mind, but you don't have to own them. That's not just because you have thoughts don't mean that, oh, I've sinned. I've missed it because this thought came across. No, don't own it. Let it pass. Cast it out. Whatever you got to do. Get off mm. from it. And yeah. um 
So we're in a spiritual battle, and these are just things we need to do. Um, and uh, there's a scripture here, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we must mm -hmm. recognize the enemy. Uh, we must fight the enemy with the word of God and um, and just move on. Mm. That's a good uh, word. Okay. I, I guess that's all I want to say. You sure There's that's so all? Is that it? <laughs> Come on. You keep rolling. The camera's rolling. We got you. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Else can go yeah. ahead and share. But great job, great, okay. great, great job. Amy. That that's right. Because you know we're looking at the love of God. You know, you know, because that's when we started this lesson. We were like, you know, I, I asked the question. You know, why the believer's authority? Why are we looking at this? You know, and uh, we can't go through it all, but you know, it's pretty phenomenal. We we haven't even. Uh, scratch the surface on understanding God's love for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not even. And, and uh, to start there and to know why he's empowered us and, and to know that it's love and it's not a do, don't, do, don't, do, don't, do. Uh, but it, it is, uh, man, to empower us. Hallelujah. Who else? Mm -hmm. One through three. And it may not like, even be a complete. Go ahead. I feel like um all lessons one through through three have been uh to me at least has been more of like um starting off by renewing your mind um because you need to be able to recognize like you know we're not up against you know our own selves we're up against you know demonic powers you know there's spiritual powers that that floats around that we can't see you know and then. And then the way these things influence us is by what our flesh enjoys, you know? So like, uh, I remember, I think last time Darren was talking about the music, you know, like music, what we watch and just anything that catches the flesh's attention is always going to be influencing us. And so I feel like lesson one through three has been um, pretty much preparing my mind to recognize everything around us that's going on, because even though we can't see it, there's another world and that's the spiritual world and there's demons around us all the time, you know, trying their best to influence us and grab our attention. Mm. And so I think that's what that's been preparing me for is, uh, you know, changing, renewing my mind to be able to recognize, you know, these, these things that influence us. So we don't fall short to it. Holly, good job, buddy. Good job. Who's next? I'd like to uh, piggyback off of what Miguel had said, or even Mr. Heesha can go. Larry, somewhere else. All right, Darren Robinson. All okay, right. yeah, piggybacking on what Miguel had said, uh, I found myself doing this last night. And when I'm telling you, feeling convicted, okay, I went back to start on one and two because when I joined you all, this great group is blessed and just just outstanding. Just, just for me, it's so phenomenal what I'm experiencing in this short term that I've been here, the short time, excuse me, I went back to what Miguel said, music. I wanted to hear some gospel music last night. So this guy named Rance Allen, he's passed on a couple of years back, I think Kobe got him, something like that. But he's a great singer. He's a pastor. And I was able to go like, I think, nine or 10 songs. Now, soon as I'm done with this, the next video after I'm watching this is some... R&B or rap or whatever music. Now, I haven't heard this type of music in quite a while. And I was tempted and I fell to that temptation like Jeffrey's saying and like Tommy was saying, he'll get you with the same tricks. And just the three or four little songs I listened to, just when I wake up saying this morning, the last thing that I heard was in my <laughs> mind. Oh my yeah. God, I could not believe it. That I'm like, wait a minute. That same stuff. So these lessons, it's a cleansing for me because I had to get plans from the stereotypical, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Baptist being raised in a Baptist church and hearing the same old stuff and, you know, and nothing against Baptist church, uh, what I've learned. But 
it's not the truth of what we're learning here. I had a friend reach out to me that's a pastor. And when he told me he had been praying for me, I said, well, I thank you what I said, but I'm in a battle with the enemy. I have to put my boots, I have to go back to basic training. I'm an ex-military. That's the way I feel. The, the, the spiritual yes. warfare is prevalent. Yeah, it's yeah. attacking everybody from all kids, adults, grandparents, friends, neighbors, co-workers. And it's just, it just it unleashed itself. When I fell victim to, listen, now, nine gospel songs I just heard, and the three that I heard that, and, and I shouldn't listen to it, but I just, I, it was right there in my face. Mm -hmm. And that's when I woke up and I like, Lord, I just kept on saying it and got it out of my conscience. I kept on speaking it like the lady was saying on here uh, last week. I'm just learning to start speaking. Just speaking. Mm. Just speaking. And it went away. And it went away. Hallelujah. Amen. through this process. You know, and like Miguel was saying, you just got to start, get yourself ready because this is spiritual warfare and I don't care if I live to be 60, 70, 80, 90, whatever. You know, this is a battle that we're going to have to continue to keep at bay. Great job, Darren. That's right. That's right. It, it Things become a mu much simpler when we realize this is warfare. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. You know. And, and, you know, the tricks of the devil are mm -hmm. simple and, you know, uh, the Lord has uh, set us free uh, from these things, but so often, you know, we want to, I mean, it's kind of the way, just kind of what it is, that same trick a hundred times over. Uh, we want to go back and, and we're clean, you know, we're all, and I like I say, just as far as things, we want to go back to uh, what we know. And, and what I'm talking about is, is, is deviating from the truth to following back to the lie, you know, uh, as far as the pig going back to the, uh, the mud pit, you know, and that kind of thing is, and Miguel mentioned it, uh, last week on that, you know, there's things that are easy and they feel good and all these things. And, uh, it's because habitually we've trained ourselves to, to follow the, uh, the humanistic or the demonic process because it's what's prevalent today because we do not hear the, the truth preached. Very true. So many times they preach, but then they cut it off. They don't really get down to the details. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, try, preach the, they preach the safe. Uh, they don't want to step on anybody's toes. Yes. So they cut it off Preach where it, it. nobody fusses at them. And but nobody, yep, yep, nobody fusses at them. And, uh, and they you know, go you, away not knowing the full message. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And, 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 and the thing is, the uh, Darren was asking me today, uh, are you a pastor? Or, you know, what is your title? What is your... And and I said, yeah, I'm I'm Jeffrey Tragic RC. Yeah. And he's like, RC, what's that? I said, regular Christian. Amen. It's Christ in us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's Christ in you, it's Christ in me, and there's nothing, you know, it's an equal opportunity word. You know, the age of the super duper is over. That's old testament. I mean, we all have the anointing of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We have Christ in us. What else could we possibly need? Mm -hmm. Except to know that we can and that we've been empowered and that we are, that we are approved by the Father with this Amen. power. That's right. To know that we can. But oftentimes we've been taught it's his fault. Yep. Well, though, yeah, if the Lord would only, if the Lord would only do this for me, you know, I would. And and you know, again and again and again, you know, we look at First Peter, excuse me, Second Peter, chapter one. You know that He has given me everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him and His Son Jesus Christ. You know that 
by by this correct knowledge, by the accurate knowledge, I can participate in the divine nature. You can do all of us. I'm just saying, put that, you know, personalize it. That, that we can participate in the divine nature, his nature. And that's where all the precious <laughs> promises are found. So he's already given. And man, that's fantastic news. I mean, that's great news. I mean, because I, I, I can work on me. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Romans 12, you know, to be transformed by the renewing of, of our what's. Our minds. Minds. Yeah. Of our minds. And to quit mm -hmm. thinking like we've done the last 50 years that didn't work. And say, you know, maybe my thinking is just not quite what it should be. Lord, I need wisdom. Just show me. Amen. Amen. And go to the word and dig. And I was mentioning with Darren this week. What did I tell you, Darren? But but you now you're digging in 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 uh one and so I've you've never, 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 never been to. Yeah, you yeah, you're saying that. I was digging in this uh, soil, and I've never been. And it just, that's right. you know, been, I'm, I'm, I'm 57. Uh, so he, it's such a, I just, it's hard to believe I've missed this. And we're, we're not taught this. And that's what's so astonishing. We're not. <laughs> Pastors, for they will, they do not mention that. Like, like the lady was just saying, they cut it off. And, and send you back home, and then they wait, can't, can't wait to see you again next week because you are numbered. So you're numbered to a process of uh, multiplication. If you're if you're a tither, if you're a giver, however you do it, they want to keep you in that same process. Not saying everyone does, but it's a process. It is. Mm -hmm. Surface level right. preaching. Yep. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to add something. When uh, Amy was mentioning about um, the uh, mind is 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 the battlefield, and and it's very true. We we tend to forget that that our thoughts have ripple effects, you know, um, because the 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 first the first thing that that Satan tries to attack us is through our mind, because mm -hmm. what, what enters through our mind then eventually comes out our mouth. And then mm. what comes out our mouth eventually because what we becomes what we do. And so mm. that's why he he attacks us first through the mind because you know it's it's the ripple effect. And mm. um it, it's yeah, we if if I mean we, we have to we have to not uh let our guard down. I mean, especially right now in the type of environment, you know, uh, that the world is in the state of chaos that it is right now, we just, we can't, we can't let our guard down. We, we have to always, that's why they say it's a battlefield. The mind is a battlefield. And what do you wear in a battlefield? Your armor, you know? Mm. And yeah, we just have to always keep that in mind. Always. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point, Paige. Good job. And 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 like I said, all in mind with the love of God, with God's love for us. You know, and like I say, if you didn't catch the first three uh YouTubes on this lesson, you know, that that's that's the he has equipped us. Why? So we can defeat the enemy. So so we can yeah, um... his love for his love for us. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. you know his love for us, and he's given us all the tools we need. But we've been so indoctrinated, and and you know that's the thing is some of us go through our lives and we go forty, fifty years, and and uh, and well, I Darren, I won't throw you in there. You just you just said it, you know. I'll let you go. Wow, how can I be fifty seven and not not have known this? Mm -hmm. You know, and you're not alone. Don't we are not beating you up because you, you're 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 in a camp that was taught similar uh, in many ways. Uh, and, the, and the thing is to where we go from here, you know, and being strong in God's word to to knowing the Lord and that close relationship and, and moving forward because it is a spiritual battle. And the thing is, the devil, like we mentioned earlier, would rather you believe anything when you look at Mark four, Luke eight, Matthew 13, parable of the sower. You know that the the devil would 
rather you believe anything except for God. Mm. He doesn't care what you believe. It doesn't matter as long as it's not God. Yep. And 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 the thing is, the Lord made us in in His image, and the devil is looking to transfer us to the devil's own image because he is. Why 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 did he fall in the first place? Because he was jealous. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And the thing is that the tricks are the same again and again and again. And, you know, we ought to do a YouTube on 15 ways not to be a dope. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it, 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 the, 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 the tricks are the same. And so the thing is, although we're in a spiritual battle, we want to go. And I'm going to start uh, right here from where uh, Andrew starts out on, on the lesson one. Uh, first, first line in the scriptures right there is finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, that you may be able to stand, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle, <laughs> yeah, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we flesh, we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the thing is, we've been equipped to beat all that. Mm-hmm. And then we went into, you know, looking at things, uh, as far as fear and faith, you know, uh, you know, through this, some of this, you know, we look, you know, uh, Romans chapter six, you know, says, know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants or whom ye shall obey, whether sin unto death, there's Kenneth, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. And so it's our choice. God's not strong, strong arming anybody. You know, he didn't force you to get born again. Right? Did he? Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Nobody out there. And the word nobody. is an equal opportunity. Nobody. That's right. And it's an equal opportunity word, you know, there. And so, uh, anyhow, let me skim through here. Chapter one through three. See, uh, any highlights I see, and we need to jump on in lesson four. Yeah. But powerful to know that oh, the white Satan, who, who he may devour, you know, be a doer of the word. Know who you are in Christ. You know, it's it's Christ in you. That's that's the that's the mystery of the gospel. You know. And Kenneth's on here now. He did a good sermon on that at Lone Pine uh, Church there in Palestine. Uh, right there. Let's see. And then Satan's inroads. We talked about that last time. Uh, these seeds are planted. Anybody? Anybody got anything else for lessons one through three? How will you live differently knowing what you learned from there? Yeah, Jeff, I'd like to reiterate that um, we've talked about the love of God, um, and uh, that's almost a cliche. Um, until it becomes experiential, until it is, uh, I think it's Psalms 34. Um, taste. 34, 34, 8 says, uh, taste and see the goodness of God. You know, um, unfortunately, I can tell you how good something tastes all day long, but un- unless <clears throat> I'm passionate enough about my love for a certain food or something like that, I'm not going to convince you to taste it. But once you taste it and see, then then it's your own. But mm. that becomes an experiential knowledge. You know, that's John 17, 3 is eternal life, knowing God and his son, Jesus Christ, knowing him experientially. And the, the most important 
important part of that for me is uh, Galatians 5, 6, you know, faith works by love and it's mm. his work, his love for us that allows us to have faith in his word. Hallelujah. Um, I, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about this study uh, as, as an opportunity to walk in the power of God. But if we're not careful, it becomes another checklist of, of religion, you know, exactly. I, I don't know how many people that we've talked to. Um, uh, I think Larry and I talked about this last night. Whenever I, <clears throat> whenever I pray for someone and their symptoms leave, I tell them, Hey, the devil knows what I believe. If he asks you what you believe, are you going to be ready to, to answer that? If not, then you call me and we'll get rid of it. Mm. But so as, and as much as I want to encourage them to stand in that, in that uh, newfound authority, uh, I really, really encourage them to cast those things out themselves. But if for some reason they hit some resistance, then they feel condemned. And that is, that is not, that's not the plan. Oh. Um, so I want us to remember that uh, if I if my foot hurts, I'm going to say pain leave my foot right now. If I look at that as an opportunity to walk in God's power, then I'm empowered by the grace of God. If I am saying pain leave in Jesus' name because of something that is in me and not walking in the grace of God. It's the same words, but it's the perspective and the well that it comes from. So if it's, um, and the pain doesn't leave, then all of a sudden I'm condemned because I'm not doing something right. And it becomes another religious checklist. So none of this is, is works unless you see it through the lens of Romans 8.32, which says, he, he didn't even bear, spare his own son, but gave him up freely. Uh, how will he also not not freely all, also give us all things? That is the kind of love that we have to understand that we get to walk in. So when we're mm. commanding these things, uh, I, I agree, man. Whenever you walk into a church house, there's there's never a time when you are more, more vulnerable because you open up right. your heart. You want to hear yep. the goodness of God. Yep. Yep. But from the pulpit, you have to be careful. Uh, and what you hear in this class, whether it's it's Jeff or yep. me or yep. anybody on here, Amen. That's if right. It's, if it's not rooted and grounded, one and first in love, or two in the Word, you 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 best not take heed of that. Um, so, uh, and Mr. Darren mentioned mentioned music. I think the second place that our hearts are the most vulnerable is in music. Somehow it just shoots straight to your heart. So uh, music, I think, makes us vulnerable also. So I, I want us to I want us to walk in the authority and the power of God because it's Christ in us. But I also want us to always remember that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Romans eight one. So it's uh, it's a matter of perspective. Are we going to walk in the opportunity that He's given us? as opposed to having another checklist to walk in religion. So that's, I think that, that that is the essence of this Bible study, that it only, uh, it only sets you free uh, if you're continuing to walk in the, in the complete grace and the love of God. That, so. And to know the will of God. Amen. Right. I mean, it's good Amen. to order, to know what God's will is, because that's the most confusing thing. And Tommy's spot on on that, you know, to know the love of God for ourselves, but to know the will of God. And if you're if you're wondering if he wants you well or not, you know, if you think he's casting this on you or, you know, at any point that we think that God is the problem. We're in unbelief. Hallelujah, Jeff, that's a great point. Amen. You know, because the thing is, he, he has given us so much all these things incomprehensible uh that that we can uh rely on that we can count on 
But yeah. if we don't know it and we don't know what the will of God is, you know, it's awfully hard to it's awfully hard to believe it. You know, we have known and believed, you know, with uh, the love that God has towards us. You know, that's what John writes in first John. And so to know the will of God, Ephesians writes, you know, in numerous other places says that to we, you know, we're, we're to know the will of God, that we're not to be unwise, you know, that we're, but we're to know it. And the thing is once, you know, the thing is, and I've mentioned this again and again and again, and, and when we did the God Wants You Well series, that if we miss the heart of God when it comes to healing, we tend to miss it just about everywhere else. Amen. Because everything else works the same. You know, but if we're starting to question him on, 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 you know, uh, but thing is, we have to go back to word. And as I mentioned to Darren this week, is is uh, what what does Romans twelve one through three say? You know, I think it's twelve mm-hmm. two to be we're to be transformed mm-hmm. by the renewing of our minds, right? Right, man. Yeah. Okay, but oftentimes what we see as humans humanist you know in humanistic thinking carnal thinking we're waiting for god to be transformed by the renewing of his mind to us you you need me to say that again (laughs) i don't know if it's really that or if it's sometimes we don't know how amen well it's both uh, annie yes it's both because we're go ahead it's both but when you're kind of when you're in a church that's i'll tell you i've been listening to andrew's videos and podcasts this spring and i have just gotten such a a new revelation of who god really is Amen. His love. Amen. Instead of condemnation and shame. Mm. And I think that's why I chose to do a Bible study with people that are are more in tune with the love and the grace of mm. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Amy. Uh, Annie. No, that's Trish. Amy. That's our that's our Yankee Is that Trish? Friend. That's Amen. Amen. Trish? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh man, I'm sorry, yeah. Trish. You sound like That's Andy. Right. Y'all sisters? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. man. man, that's exciting. Yeah, that's, you, that's, we agree. And we we do these, agree. Many of these scriptures that I'm learning, I have been aware of them. Like, I've been a Christian for over 40 years. And I have been aware of many of them, but to put them together Mm. in the way that Andrew has put them together and in the way we're studying them and looking at things so different from, I'm in a Pentecostal church, but there's not really a lot of love of God. It's more, it just seems more, you got to do this, and you're always got to mm. be sin conscious and confess oh, well. a little thing. And it's very difficult. So these scriptures are really awakening my spirit to the Hallelujah. Lord. Wow. That is great. awesome, Trish. So thank yes. you. Oh. Yeah, really. Great job. That 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 That's right on. That, that that's uh yeah because the, the thing is we've just been taught uh taught different you know on things as well and like i say the the scripture is real clear if i want to go in and, and some of you guys may not know the example and maybe i've already told it already and i apologize if you've heard it a hundred times but it, it just makes sense uh you know the uh, the scriptures for our benefit you know that's that's why the lord put it there we don't need it for the next life you know, but mm-hmm. but to be, you know, and, and that's the thing. That's why Satan comes immediately to steal the word, 
you know, we see in, in the parable of the sower is because, you know, once you receive that word, you, you have a potential to be dangerous to him uh, in his kingdom. But without yeah. that word, you're, you're not, you're not dangerous. You know, you, you're, cause you're operating on carnal mind and to be carnally minded is, is, uh, is, 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 is death. Um, uh, but, and I have no clue where I was going with this. I was moving pretty good, but, uh, <laughs> I was yeah. rolling, but I looked at, I looked at the page and I did a squirrel over here. I digress, <laughs> but, 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 but the, uh, let's see if I can catch it again. But, uh, yeah, many of us have not been, uh, uh, taught. And the other thing I want to get into is, uh, you know, on the condemnation is the thing is you guys are all in a group that that believes the lord you know now and to be uh don't have that pride that says you know i should be able to get this right now that i don't need help i mean tommy yeah. and i go back and forth for help you know i had Amen. a deal probably man uh two months ago i could not shake it 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 was it was really not good and i just gave him a call and within about i don't know 30 seconds minute and a half hallelujah you know he spoke over me said jeff get out of the way mm -hmm. i got this and and uh you know and that's why we need the body and we need each other this is not a because the devil would love to isolate each and every one of us yes. you know but to say hey you know man i've been struggling with it i got this i can't i can't quite uh and i'm talking about uh just uh like that that was a uh, uh a physical ailment i had you know just knock it right off you know we had same thing sandra is told on the god I want you oil things that you know she was she was trying to battle covid she was sick i mean she was this is when it first came out and man she was she couldn't walk to the bathroom and back without being winded for about four hours i mean she was in horrible shape and then uh, Gino called me and said, hey, yeah, well, Sandra has been sick for so many days. I'm like, why did she call me? Why did mm -hmm. she call me? And so I called her, and Tommy said, it's always got to be in love. I heard him say that earlier, but I, my, my words to her was, why didn't you call me? Why didn't, you, do, why, why didn't you give me a call? Mm -hmm. And I was stern with her, you know, but it was in love. And uh, anyway, we spoke over her, and uh, – you know, she wanted to initially just let, I said, I need you to get up and I need you to do some push ups. I need you to get up and I need you to do this. All right. We spoke over, we put delivered the word. I need you to do this now. And, and the thing is, and look, but to do not, what I'm getting at is to realize, man, you know, you're a good company and, and we're here for one another and, and to not be feared to reach out and, uh, shoot an email, send a text, you know, that kind of thing, and, and say, hey, and I don't care if it's a toe that's hurting, and you can't seem to lick it. You know, you don't want to lick your toe, but you can't seem to beat it. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, reach out. You know, Amy the other day with your back, you know, that kind of thing. We had, we had the, you know, things like that, and just to reach out and not, you know, we got so many forms of communication now to do it, but we have the love of God backing us. You're backed by the love of the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Okay, we better get into lesson four. We're going to miss it. What do y'all think? Amen. All right. Miguel, you up? Yeah, I was about to actually mention I'll read. All right. <laughs> I knew you would. All right. Please do, sir. Thank you. All right, let's, lesson four, no wicked thing. There are time in life when we just feel like speaking forth our negative thoughts and emotions. However, in light of the spiritual battle, these are times we must exercise our faith and self-control. In Matthew 6, 31, the Lord reveals us to us at what point we take a thought for our own. Take no thought, saying, a thought becomes your own when you begin, when you begin speaking it out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. You can keep all kinds of thoughts from coming across your mind. When I found out my son was dead, thoughts of grief, fear, and panic crossed my mind. I'm human, just like anybody else. However, you can not you can keep from taking those thoughts as your own. Kenneth Hagen used to put it this way. You can't keep a bird from flying over your head, 
but you can keep it from landing there and building a nest. Negative thoughts will come at times, but you don't have to receive them. They don't have to become a part of you. If you don't say it, it won't be yours. All right, Paul's right there. No, take no thought saying. Saying. You know, you remember Mark eleven twenty two through 24. You know, whosoever shall say to this mountain and believe in their heart, you know, shall speak to this mountain and cast in the sea, you know, shall they not doubt? They shall have what they say. Right. Right. They say words are very important. And, you know, uh, it's really often really easy to speak negativity. It's really easy to speak against somebody negatively, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I'm, you know, we, we, we've, we've got, uh, you know, second Timothy four, two, you know, we're re reprove, rebuke, exhort, you know, uh, the man of God, you know, to, we, we're supposed to correct, you know, that kind of thing but as far as watch what we speak because we what we don't want to do is manifest things into our lives and then the thing is we have thoughts that come into our head where we can say you know replace that negative thought with a uh positive thought for that person or pray for that person and say yeah that really they really made me mad but lord i just bless them and and, and Lord, we pray to get their mind right and, you know, that kind of thing. There's a difference in how that affects your that affects your own heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Hung by the tongue. Go ahead, Miguel. You're doing good, buddy. Satan passes thoughts, feelings, and attitudes across our hearts and minds. How do we prevent these seeds from taking root, beginning to grow, and then producing the negative crop he desires? We take no thought saying, if you don't say it, then it's not yours. However, the moment you start verbalizing and speaking forth these negative thoughts, they become yours and begin releasing this negative power in your life. You need to take on this attitude. I refuse to speak forth anything contrary to what I'm believing for. Some people are believing for healing. They've asked God to heal them, and they're confessing, I believe I'm healed, despite the fact that they haven't seen the physical manifestation yet. But when someone calls them on the phone and asks, how are you doing? They respond by telling them how bad they feel. Without realizing it, they have just released a negative spiritual force. Proverbs mm. 18, 21 Say that says, again. Will you, will you reread re that, please? I'm sorry. Those two, last two sentences. Right. <clears throat> Some, oh, okay. Um, I'll read the paragraph. Some people are believing from healing. They've asked God to heal them, and they're confessing, I believe I'm healed, despite the fact that they haven't seen the physical manifestation yet. But when someone calls them on the phone and asks, how are you doing? They respond by telling them how bad they feel. Without realizing it, they have just released a negative spiritual force. Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. We can't only just speak life with your tongue. We can also speak death. Sadly, the truth is that most of us release much more death and life. We count ourselves with our own words. We're hung by the tongue. Okay, pause on that one. You remember we talked about Isaiah fifty four seventeen uh, last couple of lessons. All right, Larry, mute your mic, will you, bud, please? Oh, uh, we uh, we've talked about Isaiah fifty four seventeen. You know, and that the uh, what does anybody have that one by heart? The whole thing. Come on, Agatha, up in there. Come on, Aggie's got it. Come on. <laughs> Aggie Aggie may have gone back to sleep mm, yes you. Isaiah 54 17 oh, I'm here. please girl please Isaiah 54 17 the whole thing please um Isaiah 54 17 <laughs> no weapon. <laughs> oh, okay. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Mm. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, no tongue that rises and judge me. Uh, 
any tongue that rises in judgment against me, I shall condemn. Yeah. And the thing is, the words, our words are powerful on what we speak. And like we talked about the last couple of times is, you know, but if we turn, use that weapon and we turn it against ourselves and I go, mm -hmm. yeah, guys, you know, life really sucks. Life's awful. You know, oh, yeah, I don't feel real good. And we start doing that, that start, we, you know, that's got a smell to it. And we looked at lesson, the last lesson around, you know, are you stinky? And, uh, man, those, those, those words, you know, and I've mentioned in past lessons before that I don't know why, but you, uh, uh, a sheep or a cow can die on the farm. And it seems like every fly for 15 counties shows up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause yeah. death has a scent. And, you know, our words have a scent just like that. And our our words either repel death, our words are a spirit in life, like Jesus said, and they repel death, or we attract the flies. And Beelzebub is the Lord of the flies. And so it's so important, like I say, on these words, man, I, I haven't arrived. You know what I'm saying? Only I've left. I really, there's times I have to watch myself. Uh, I'm getting better. And there are times we need to speak. You know, that uh, that verse right there, do you, do you still have it right there, Aggie? You want to read it one more time? Aggie, still there? Trish, yes, you got it? Yes, Isaiah 54. Go, All right, yes, yes, I'm here. Please, Isaiah, one more time. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you. So there is a time to speak against things. Amen. Right? Doesn't say be quiet. And, and what we're reading, it doesn't say it doesn't say that we're not supposed to speak at all. That's kind of the church. They're scared to preach the gospel, scared to death to tell anybody about Jesus. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, and and but we are called to speak because authority is released through speaking. We already have yeah. it, but that's where we release it. So, hallelujah. All right. You can continue on if you want, Miguel, or if somebody else would like to read, we, that's okay, too. Anybody? I'll continue if no one else wants to. Okay. All right, brother, go ahead. Words are important. You may be praying for one thing and then speaking against it. You may be praying for restoration in your marriage, yet you constantly criticize be down and speak negatively about it. You are releasing a negative spiritual force, death that will counter what you're praying. Even though God wants to move on your behalf and bring restoration, you're releasing a contrary spiritual force with those negative words. You need to be careful how you speak about your children. It's not wrong to state a fact. If somebody asks, don't say everything is perfect when it isn't. You can say there are problems, but and then counter it with what you're believing for. It's okay to say, here's a problem, but everything will work out. Mm. However, if you say, I'm believing God for a miracle, but, and then you start examining and explaining all the bad things, you've just destroyed what you're trying to accomplish. Mm. It really does matter what you put after your butt. It doesn't Sometimes matter where you put your butt. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sometimes you just have to acknowledge the facts hey i've got a problem i'm fighting for sickness but then you counter it with the truth of god's word but i believe i'm healed in jesus name mm -hmm. you need to be constantly aware of the truth that your words are either releasing life or releasing death don't just allow anything to come out of your mouth say to watch over your mouth and speak life psalm 141 3 because you will eat the fruit of it 
Mm. Proverbs 18, 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Every word you say out of your mouth is a seed that produces after its kind. If you are griping, complaining, and speaking forth all this negativity, then that's the kind of fruit you'll wind, you'll wind up eating from those words. If you are bitter in your heart, it started with you speaking forth, forth some things that you shouldn't have said. You can keep a problem from coming, but you can keep those problems from dominating you by speaking forth the right, positive, word-oriented things. Your words are important. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Continue. Uh, anybody else like to read? Gino? Awfully quiet over there. Yeah, I'll read. <laughs> All Burn. right. Good, great job, Miguel. Good job, brother. Good job. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Blinded to the truth. In this spiritual battle, Satan takes advantage of the words we say. As Matthew 12, 37 says, for by the words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned when we don't realize just how important our words are we speak forth foolishness doubt unbelief and other things that allow satan to devour us because we let down our guard part of paul's commission from god and ours as well is to uh, as acts 26 18 says turn them from the power of satan unto god Many people don't really recognize that Satan is dominating, exerting power in their lives. They just think it's circumstances, fate, or luck. This scripture makes it very clear that they have been under the influence of the devil. And I'm going to read Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And it says, And you hath, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin." Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others." Before we converted to Christ, we were by nature children of Satan. We lived our lives under his influence and dominion, blinded to the truth. And 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The devil is actively at work today, hardening people and blinding them from the truths of, go of the gospel. This is not a passive battle. He's aggressively pursuing and trying to destroy people. One of the reasons why the enemy has such a stronghold on so many people is because the church hasn't really recognized the spiritual battle it's in. Mm. That is true. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah a whole lot there i mean really mm -hmm. uh blinded to the truth and i want to you know he didn't have it in there but i want to pull up uh ephesians four sixteen. uh you know with that and uh, four seventeen, and it says you know therefore uh this i say therefore and testify in the lord that ye henceforth walk not as the other gentiles walk don't do that, you know, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance, the ignorance, the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. How many Paul, times Paul write, I write these things so you not be ignorant? Mm -hmm. You know, why? Not so he can be ugly about it. Because, man, you got to know this. Hey, I'm writing this. Guys, here's the deal. Listen up. This is important. 
Yeah, I I love I love putting feathers in ink and trying to write on parchment. No, this is important. You know, or like he said in Galatians, look at what a long letter I'm writing you. Don't waste my time. Look at this. This is serious. Amen. And so on this, like I say, yes, we have so much of the blind leading the blind. Uh, it's it's amazing. I'm trying to find my spot. Sorry, guys. Uh, so much of the blind leading the blind out there. And Darren was asking me today stuff. And, you know, that's that's all I could tell him. You know, uh, actually, I told him more. But that that's basically... <laughs> <laughs> we don't watch what we say uh anyhow uh the thing is to be wise you know and and tommy and i have talked again and again and again to know the word for yourself you know you need to question me you need to question anything that's said here you need to know it in the word and if you have questions we have to direct, accurately divide the word of god we see so many times people mix the 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 Mosianic covet, the Abrahamic covet. They, they they go through and they they go through the gospels and they and they say things that that Jesus told the the, the Jews that were under law. Uh, you you know the thing you know okay John John you know what what did Jesus say about John the Baptist? There's no greater prophet before him. There's no greater prophet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so, and 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 I heard, you know, I'll say that from Curry Blake, you know, this. The thing is, what did John do that was so special? He he. What about miracles? You have a lot of miracles. No miracles. I'm oh, talking miracles. about John the Baptist. Yeah. John the Baptist. Yeah. Yeah. John the Baptist. No miracles. Amen. Uh, but what a prophet does is he speaks for God, right? It's the message. Amen. And here's the thing is all the other prophets, as great as they were, were saying, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And John said, Amen. he's here. He's here. Amen. He's here. And so the thing is, the one thing, the greatest of all the, Jesus said that the least of these that are, that are in the kingdom of heaven are greater than John the Baptist. The Amen. least of these. John could never say, Christ in me, the hope of glory. He could never say that. Right? Right? right. In, in, in any of the Old Testament guys couldn't say that. Mm -hmm. But you can. John, Amen. Isaiah, Moses, any of those guys would do, Elisha, they would do backflips to do what you had right now, what you have. Yeah. You're like, you know, they're like one of them great big Univac computers, what have you, that type of thing. They couldn't do much of anything. And 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 you know, you've got the capacity that they never had. Mm -hmm. You know, and we got Elisha walking up to the river and, and slapping the river with his mantle and walking through it. But he spent a lot of time alone with God. Mm -hmm. And he believed in the goodness of God. And yet we are inundated, and Tommy may take off on this one, with so much stuff that we're told from every other race. And a lot of it has a form of godliness, but denies mm -hmm. the power. And Paul tells Timothy, stay away from that stuff. Yeah. Am I rambling or is anybody no. getting somebody out of this? My pastor was saying the other day, if we are not anchored in the truth and Jesus and the kingdom, there really is no hope for anyone. 
because hmm. Jesus is our hope for, you know, eternal life, eternal salvation. He's our hope, and eternal life is what? Knowing God and the Son, Knowing Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, John 17, 3. Hallelujah. It, it, it is now. Where's the kingdom? Within us. Within us. At hand. At hand, that's right. Yeah, right there. It is right there. That's right. Now put your and hand so, out, Jeffrey, like you always do. Like, like I always do. The kingdom of heaven is, I got this black screen on now, the green screen, but yeah, it's not doing it. But yeah, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right there. There you oh. go. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the thing is, Christ in you, the hope of glory, you have the opportunity that, that John the Baptist didn't have. You have the opportunities there to say here the kingdom of heaven's right here reach out and get it let's let's change your situation right amen. now amen and to be isaiah 61 you know one through two and 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 luke four yeah. you know the power is within you and the thing is as soon as we understand that the calvary is within us Because of the love of God for us, He didn't leave you as an orphan. He 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 left you as somebody that the devil should well fear, unless you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. That's why He wants to steal the word. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Next, Gino, go ahead. By corrupting good manners. As a minister of the gospel, I use daily programs on both television and radio to share the truth of God's word all around the world. However, most of the other, other programs people watch and listen to on television and radio are used of the devil to strengthen his influence and control. Both non-believers and Christians alike are plugged into it and to one degree or another are fed a steady diet of ungodliness, sexual immorality, violence, strife, hatred, and sarcasm. We allow this sewage to pour into our homes, and Satan uses it in, in our lives. It's not that television or radio are evil in and of themselves. God is using both of them mightily to advance his kingdom. However, Satan is also using the vast majority of its programming to destroy people's lives. Some folks think, oh, I can watch this stuff and it doesn't affect me. God's word says they're deceived. Be not deceived, evil communications, corrupt good manners. That was 1 Corinthians 15.33. You may convince yourself that you're not being influenced or corrupted, but the word reveals otherwise. You simply cannot maintain your spiritual equilibrium while indul indulging your eyes on ungodliness. David, the man after God's own heart, understood this, and he said in Psalms 101.3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Mm. As a follower of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to make the same commitment, saying, I will not watch anything wicked. I refuse to paint a picture on the inside of me of lust, anger, immorality, hatred, strife, or murder. I recognize that every time I open myself up to such things, there is a negative spiritual power there waiting to gain an inroad into my life. By God's grace, I will not give the devil any access into my life. All right, Gino, pause there. Good job. Good job. Pause there just a second. Uh, and then going to pull up, uh, like I said, we had, what we said out of Ephesians, having their darkened being, uh, their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And who being uh, past feeling had given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness and greediness but ye have not so learned Christ. And uh, anyway, it talks on, it says that you put up, put off the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed 
in the spirits of your mind that you may put on the new man, which is after God it is created in righteousness and true holiness. And then it, go, it continues on. You can re- uh, go into uh, uh, Ephesians uh, uh, 4 there. Now, the thing is, you know, on that, I say the Lord loves you. And the thing is, and, and Andrew's very strong on that, where, where he says, you know, you need to stop these things. And this is a do, don't, do, don't, do, don't checklist. I mean, if you want to lose, keep doing those things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, he didn't force you to get born again, but but yeah. to 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 stand in the word, he you know it, it he still loves you, but it's it's like me and I've done it. I mean, I've mentioned before, there's things that I've done and whatnot, and keep going back to the go going back to the the what do they call a hog pit where they say a waller? What do they call that? <laughs> what is yeah. Anyway, Stye. anyway. If all, yeah, keep going back to the hog sty or whatever it is. But, you know, and I, and so finally something will click. And after I've had my butt kicked 600 times, you know, and, and, and over 20 years, and I go, oh, okay, I think I get it now. You know, okay, I, I'm, I'm, and it's not the Lord doing it to me. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's not the Lord doing it to, it's not his fault, you know, at all. Uh, and he's like, Oh, Jeff. Okay. That's, that's time 559. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, yeah, it, it, it's, but we tend to man loves man's way. Am I the only one? Nobody else out there? Nope. You're not alone, sir. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say I was the only one. But he just yeah. saw <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's just you. <laughs> you know. but, but i think we do that. Of, yeah i think Sorry, one no. of the ways that we uh we we impact our own lives the way jeff is saying that we just continue to do these knuckle brain things and the probably the the way that we do that the most is what we're saying you know i got to minister quite a quite a bit this week and um uh, you know, one person I was ministering to, um, she kept referring to um, her current situation um, and say, and saying, this is my, my condition. Um, you know, we get the opportunity to uh, speak what our future is. Um one of the things that my mentor taught me, um, I remember telling him one time that a member of our church had died and he said, praise God. And I realized right then he wasn't praising God for the, 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 the person passing, but that was just his, that's the first thing that came out of his mouth was praise God. And, um, uh, I've kind of gotten in the habit of everything is hallelujah. Either I don't care what the comment is, my comment is going to be hallelujah. Either I'm going to praise God for his goodness, or I'm going to praise God that he is fixing to show us his goodness. Mm. So hallelujah is just an affirmation in my heart that the goodness of God is going before me. Um, I, I think last month or so we talked about how when we say a statement, we have to understand that after every statement we say, there's an understood amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Amen. So be it. So every time we say something, oh, I'm never going to get over this cold. Amen. You know, you don't have to. It's just an understood in the spiritual world that when you say something, it is followed by amen. So we're going to have to be very careful about what we're saying. And it's not mm-hmm. just a, this is not just a theoretical conversation a theological debate this is life and death you get to speak what you're going to have so if you continue and say well i was healed but that Mm -hmm. you know amen that that's the uh the final authority is your amen so uh it's it's very important what we say 
and I would just urge you to, um, uh, if you, if you can just get in the habit of either praise God or hallelujah or whatever. But when you get in that habit of you are constantly in communion with him and understanding that my words are going to match the will of God, the word of God, and the spirit of God and the love of God, mm. whether that's for me or for someone else. I always want my words to cooperate with the spirit of God. So whatever it takes. Pray in the spirit. <laughs> yes, Amen. that's right, Trish. That's right. Amen. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's that. That's uh, those great words. Uh there and the thing is a lot of times you know with with these things like so we we've done them our whole lives and you know the the lord says don't be in strife or paul writes you know don't be in strife all these different things uh because it's beneficial for us and you know to be in great joy that's a weapon against the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. right there when we're in fear and you know fear is just another form of unbelief you know, is what it is. And when we're in fear and, and hopelessness and, and all these things, uh, and even we talked a couple lessons ago about uh, focusing on self all the time, you know, just being totally self oriented and, and, and self directed, you know, that's kind of, I don't know if any guys been on the farm much, but when you drive a tractor back and forth in the, in a rainy season in the same track, you know, you, you dig some pretty deep ruts. And the same thing with, uh, the, uh, habits that we build something like anxiety, stress, those can just be become really tough habits because we're so used to doing them that it's our default. And we've talked about defaults in this class time and time again, but what do we default to when, when we, when we get into a situation, what is our natural what is our natural default when we've had that same trick that's tricked us a hundred times? What is our natural default? That we say, okay, you know, this time it's going to be different. Are we going to be like Wiley Coyote and we're going to fall for that same falling rock trick each time, you know, or are we going to uh, be a little smarter? Yeah. And learn. So, Hey, Jeffrey, on, on that default, um, there's Kenneth. Kenneth, go ahead and unmute if you would. Um, you know, that mentor that I was talking about was Kenneth's grandfather. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm alive because of his grandfather. Um, anyway, but uh, what would you say is a, is a really important default, uh, Mr. Christopher? I mean, with Mr. Kenneth? Well, something you talked about this last weekend? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Get out of bed, you lazy okay. dog. Yeah, I was. I was you just hanging, real I, was, I was awake. I was, I was, <laughs> it was dark in there. Yeah. Um, uh, default to keep your keep your heart keep your heart in faith. Keep your words pure. Keep your heart pure. Right. Um, mm. To keep the um, the faith cord plugged in, I guess, if you want to say it like that. Um, yeah. is th Thanksgiving. Um, several things, several times in the New Testament, it says with Thanksgiving, it tells us, you know, to do something or to, you know, Philippians 4 6 is an example. Um, uh, don't worry, but through prayer and supplication, uh, with Thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God will, will, will guard your heart. So, Holy. So, so Thanksgiving is, is a, now you sound like Tommy on this end. Uh, uh, like I'm on Star Trek. The tool that we use when when we're praying. When we're, yeah, thank Thanksgiving. That's the that's one. Of, is that better? That's better. That's better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, know how we'll, you do we'll, that. I don't know how you did that, but that was sounded pretty cool. So <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my cool voice. Um <laughs> just just 
just always being thankful. It keeps you out of doubt. It keeps you out of worry. It keeps you out of fear. And it keeps you in faith. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Yep. Hallelujah. That's right. And it's, 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 it's impossible just about to be super thankful and to be worried. Yes. You know, it, it just, but it, what, what do we choose? And the Lord's given us free will, you know, and that's the beauty of it. And that's good news to me, you know, that, that, that he's the constant man. He is just rock solid constant or again, he's a rock, harder than rock solid, you know, the constant there. And, but, and I'm the variable, but I can change me. And the good news is, is we can change those around us. Sometimes. I mean, they have free will too. But I, what I'm saying is we can shed the light uh, in their direction. So how we better finish the read because it is 10 o'clock and it's time to finish the class. I know there's people uh, East Coast and that kind of thing looking to get off. So let's finish the read. Uh, Christian, you on? Yes, sir. All right, brother. Will you finish out the Will you finish out the lesson on the read, sir? Uh, painting pictures. I believe that's it. Is that where we're at? Yes. You know. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, Trish. Good job. Okay. One of the reasons we have so much violence and immorality in our society is because there's so so much violence and immorality on television. These images are painting pictures in our hearts and minds of people who are then go out and acting on them. We can't be tempted by what we don't think, Hebrews eleven fifteen. Mm. However, what we constantly think about will, about will become what we talk about and do. Everything you say or do is releasing either God, God's or saint power in your life. Mm. Your enemy is an active force at work in the world seeking whom he may devour. First Peter 5, 8. Mm. <clears throat> he blinds the minds of those who don't believe in order to steal, kill, and destroy them. Second Corinthians 4, 4. Just putting your head in the sand and saying, I don't believe we're in a battle. I'm just going to continue on the way I've been. Is it going to change the situation? It just means that you'll be one of the casualties. Mm. It's your advantage. It is, it's to your advantage to recognize the reality of the fight and make the necessary adjustment in your thinking and lifestyle. Mm. We are responsible to submit to God and resist the devil. James 4, 7. Our thoughts, emotions, words, and actions are either given place to God or given place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 27. We need to recognize the spiritual dynamics happening all around us. I'm amazed how many people don't associate their actions with the results they're experiencing. Mm. They totally miss the correlation and don't have a clue how Satan is destroying them. While living a life in opposition to God, they come up to me and, and say, I just don't understand why the devil is after me. Mm. Are you Proceed, married? Bro. Yes. One time I had a man in our church come out to shoot my horse. While he was doing that, we began talking and he kept referring to his girlfriend. I'd seen him at church with this woman and thought she was his wife. However, the way he kept talking about his girlfriend led to believe they weren't married. So finally, I just asked him, are you married? He answered, oh, no, we're just living together. We have so many friends that have married and divorced that we think it's wisdom to live together for a while and see if we should get married or not. It's been about six months now. Immediately I asked, I thought you said you were a Christian. Well, I am. I was born again four months ago. Don't you realize that living together is contrary to God's word? This guy was a brand new believer and totally ignorant. You mean God says something about just living with the person before you get married? So I started sharing the word with him. After a little while, he said, well, we love each other and we're going to get married. So it'll be okay. I had to explain to him, it doesn't matter what's going to happen in the future. Right now, you are living in a way that exempts you from God's power. You have yielded yourself to Satan and have violated God's word. By doing so, you have to you have released demonic power in your life. The devil is just having a heyday with you. 
Proceed. Follow God's instructions. As we continue talking, he began to open up his heart. Usually it takes 30 minutes to shoe a horse, but this one took three hours. He was just soaking it up. This brother changed his mind, moved out, and they straightened up their act. When you disobey God, you open up a door to the devil. Contrary to what religion says, God still loves you. He's not mad at you, but he wants better for you. By violating God's instructions in his word and obeying the lust of your flesh, he's thrown open the door to the devil. Sam will come in, eat your lunch, and pop the bag. You don't want that. You need to change your mind and adjust your actions. We're in a spiritual battle. You can't afford you can't afford the luxury of just ignoring the instructions God has given you. Mm. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that, brother. Good job. Good job, Good job Christian. Uh, we're going to roll through this pretty quick. Now we're supposed to be getting off about 10. So as far as finishing the class, a uh, lot in that, uh, you know, we we want to realize that God's power is, you know, there for us. But he talks about ignorance. And a lot of we just don't know. You know, we only know what we know. You know, and like uh, today, got uh, I was with, with a couple of friends of mine, and and we were at. Uh, this is going to be simple, and it's going to sound romper room, but we're at CC's Pizza. And uh, anyway, it was my suggestion. You know, we went there, and you know, they were blown away that you could order a crustless pizza. You know, one without crust in a little pan, and you have all your. Uh, you know, uh, no carbs on it, you know, for the most part, that kind of thing. And, and they didn't know that you could go up to the counter and order a pizza like you wanted it. They just thought you had to take what was right there. Now, I know this is an over oversimplification, but we only know what we know. Amen. Right. And they just didn't know, you know, and, and, but yet with that, they were missing out on, but in the end of the day, they thought it was really awesome that they could go up to the counter and order what, what was what was there. They didn't know those options were available. And the thing is, this is what we you know we're talking about in the lessons past on the billboards. We see the world is inundating us with all kinds of stuff. And like the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord has empowered us, but the devil wants to diffuse us. And and whether that be that I'm so mad at this person I can't see straight and I want to sit there and fester on this thing and what have you, or it, you know, you know, big on defiling your own body, you know, when you know living in adultery things like that, you know, and these are what we talked about in God wants you well is things are governed by spiritual law, and it's not that God's mad at you, it's not that God's against you, but things are. There, there are certain things that 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 are you know uh just like gravity is is a spiritual law and if we go and jump off a building uh the law of gravity is going to take effect promise you know unless you have have something else to, to, to uh push against that you know uh it, you're, you're going to go downward you know, that law of gravity is going to take effect. And same thing with spiritual laws. And, you know, laws by definition, if laws if violated, uh, have, have consequences. And the thing is, the Lord wants the best for us. He's not He's not uh, the old mighty smiter, you know, up there looking to, to, to smite you. But he's given us a recipe book right here. And, and I, I don't think I mentioned this earlier uh, today, uh but with the with the plum jelly recipe, you know, man, it's specific. It's very specific. You go and you do exactly as that recipe says on that sure gel box, and you're going to have plum jelly every time. You every time, and the word of God's the same way. You do the word the way it says, you will have the same result every time. You know, but if you go in and you get that sure gel and you cook that pectin in for six hours versus 30 seconds, I believe the box says 30 seconds, like it says, you're not going to have plum jelly. You're going to have something else. You're going to have plum syrup, which has a kind of semblance to plum jelly, but it's not really what you wanted. And then if you go, oh, well, golly, you know. 
I like Brussels sprouts, you know, and I like plums. I'm going to put, I'll throw some Brussels sprouts in this while we're making it because that, yeah, I like both those. You start tainting the recipe, you don't get the result. Or if I'm dialing any one of you guys to, to enter this Zoom call, it was very specific, the code that had to be hit. It wasn't like, yeah, Jeff will understand. I don't know the code. Click. No. Wouldn't get in. Wouldn't, wouldn't get in at all. You know, calling your neighbor across the road. You know, delivering the mail. Put the wrong zip code. See where that goes. You know, and the word of God is just so specific. And the great news is the Lord made it specific. There's You don't have to guess. We don't have to guess about it. Hallelujah, Jeff. That's great news to me. Right? Amen. <laughs> you know, we don't have to guess. And so, uh, man, the Lord loves you that much. And anyway, I, somebody finish us out. Uh, then we'll quick clip the recording off and we'll go into free time. Uh, what? Uh, who's got anything on the lesson? Of course. Go ahead, Tommy. Who? Miguel, you got something? Amy? Darren. And, and Darren. Paige. Come on, Darren. Come on, Darren. Did you have something? Paige? Um, there's a, a teacher um at church that I really love when when she um you know brings the word to us because the way that she explains it, wow, it's 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 amazing how we can understand it so quickly. She says that. Uh, you know, the enemy custom designs some of our trials because of the things that the enemy, you know, looks at what our actions are doing and what our, our words are saying out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. um, but she also says, you know, when, when that happens to a believer, little does the enemy know that, um, you know, we're standing on God's word. And we understand the authority that we've been given by the Holy Spirit. And that some of those trials can lead us into forgiveness. And that some of those trials can lead us into provision. And that some of those trials can lead us into, in, you know, endurance of more and more trials. And, you know, she was saying, you know, first, first James 3, you know, also backs that up and saying that, you know, knowing that the testing of our faith produces endurance that all it's going to do is make us greater, just like who is living in us. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is hallelujah to that. Amen. And so be it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and the thing is with that verse, it kind of <laughs> makes me think a couple things. And, and what you said, yes, Tommy had talked about that a couple weeks ago, that the Lord knows exactly, I mean, excuse me, uh, that uh, as far as him being tested, the devil knows uh, uh, not what to throw away on that tempting them with a certain area that's not going to affect him at all but there are areas that he you know like you say a hundred times it's the same trick you know right there and then with that james uh you know james says to count it all joy when you come under what it say divers tribulations is that what it says divers yeah count it all joy why because this is another chance for me to stomp the devil's head Amen. I'm going to beat this. This is nothing, you roach. Yep. Nothing. She said that difficult times basically produce a calling inside of us to seek God more. And I believe that. Truly. Okay. All right. No, I'm here. I'm here. Right. I lost I lost my, uh, my earplug, so I had to uh, switch to the uh, the sound from the phone, but I had the volume medium up. But uh, all right, no, we, we can hear you. Yeah, no, exactly what uh you all were just saying. I mean, for me, I've been beat down, you know, and I'm not gonna just say uh you know just by Satan, but just by you know ignorance, and, and you know, and I'm and I'm, not, I'm just saying that from what I'm saying personally for myself, not directing at any congregation person or anything like that. And uh, I'm just still, my mouth is wide open 
my mind is wide open now, but my mouth is still like, wow, I can't believe it. But what I've been learning, because I've been back and forth with Jeffrey today when he's had an opportunity to throw something at me, I've been, you know, going over other videos and the testimony of Sherry. And I've been like listening to the word. And then when somebody say something in reference <laughs> to coming out of a particular verse and a particular chapter, a particular book, I'm going and, and just to notice, you know, you don't get this at any traditional church that I've been to, you know, I just haven't gotten it like this. So I'm just so blessed and feel so happy to be a part of this. And I'm learning so much, but it's like, but I don't know nothing. So. How we, well, you can't say that cause you're here. You not, now, now you learn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning so much. Than you did yesterday for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying I'm learning so much, but I don't know nothing. Like I'm still like a baby with so much farther to go with learning and we can heal ourselves. We can teach people to heal themselves. Our family member, my wife, my kids, you mm -hmm. know, family members that, you know, and then I have someone that's way older, like 18 to 20 years older than me. And I've saw how he was raised in the church and he knows nothing about this. So I look forward to sharing this with as many people as I possibly can, because it's, I'm charged Hallelujah. to do. So. I am charged to do so. Hallelujah, yeah. brother. Yeah. Now you have to bestow it upon someone else. Hallelujah. That's Damn, good. He's excited. Go. Yes, yeah, yeah, well, we're, 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 we, we, none, of, none of us here have arrived, okay? We've all left. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But the fact that he loves us that much, you know, it's awesome. Great job. Great job, guys. It's that's, called that's Pass awesome. It On. Pass It On. <laughs> that's Annie. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, okay. Anybody got anything else for us? Clip the recording. Love y'all and have a good week. Okay. Amen. You too. You too. All right. Well, we were just looking at lesson four. No wicked thing of oh, Andrew Walmart's the believer's authority. And uh hallelujah. It's good news. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to finish right now. You guys uh, will clip the recording and go to free time. Thanks for joining us, everybody.